with the reminder that numbers released today will be from tests done between 24 and 48 hours ago, the Centre for COVID Administration early this morning Friday announced a further 3,058 cases, 459 from prisons, along with 22 people who died from COVID-related sicknesses in the past 24 hours. The Director of Emergency Diseases has released details that show that hospitalisation rates for people who've received vaccines are extremely low. With over 5 million doses of the AstraZeneca and the Sinovac virus already given to patients, some who've now received both shots, serious symptoms were only recorded in between 20 and 24 cases per 100,000. To put that in percentages, that's 0.024%. Meanwhile, the main centre for the second Chinese vaccine, Sinopharm, have announced that anyone who were to die from the vaccine would see their family compensated with a million baht and that anyone with side effects can claim up to 30,000 baht for medical bills. This applies to Thais and non-Thais alike who've lived in the kingdom for at least the last nine months and the undertaking is valid for 90 days after the vaccination. The huge media company Workpoint Entertainment has been forced to close its complete studio complex for 11 days after reports that several staff, including presenters, had caught COVID. It's believed that guests on TV shows had brought the virus into the complex and a full sanitisation programme is underway. Cut and paste so-called news outlets were left with egg on their face this week after expats were left in shock with fake news that they would have to find 3 million baht COVID coverage in the future to secure their continued stay here. Far from the truth, all had either copied each other's posts or that of the original source, which subsequently took the story down when it found it to be incorrect in its detail. The event, though, highlights the need for better control and more effort to avoid fake news in this country. One cut-and-paste hero, actually simply a Facebook, but with a large following and the claim to be your number one source of what's happening in Thailand, posted a half-hearted apology. In fact, the requirements, which have not been either finalised or approved, refer to visas secured outside the country, and there's no indication currently that these ideas will go into effect. A few months ago, experts predicted the heaviest of rainy seasons this year, but until now, the skies have stayed virtually empty. Now, we're told, both July and August will remain almost dry, but hopes of the wet stuff rely on heavy rainfall in September and October. Either way, the reservoirs nationally are below ideal levels for this time of year. Vaxpats, those expats who live overseas, have had their vaccinations and want to come to Thailand, are still being encouraged to book from July the 1st for the Phuket so-called sandbox system. Numbers of bookings so far haven't been very impressive after news that the seven-day virtual quarantine has been extended to 14. But with one visitor there already failing the test on his last day, the province and the government is erring on the side of caution. Thai women are amongst nearly three dozen ladies from around the globe who filed a lawsuit against Pornhub, an adult-orientated website now blocked in Thailand. They're claiming that it made a profit from videos of various descriptions posted online without their consent. Filing against the parent company MindGeek yesterday in California, the group action claims that some were under legal age whilst others were either filmed without consent or were unaware that the footage was posted on the website. The company itself has a revenue estimated at $97 billion a year. To put that into perspective, they earn nine times the amount of Netflix. Meanwhile, in our own region, the Supreme Court has reduced a 10-year sentence given to a middle-aged Thai man who shot and killed a teenager in a row over car parking four years ago to just three years and four months. The 17-year-old was shot after a verbal row over double parking. The killer was allowed out on bail but absconded and lost his 874,000 baht bail money. The Supreme Court has decided that he killed the teen in what's translated as an excessive but self-defence. The sentence also has been suspended, leaving him effectively free but due to undergo anger control courses and to perform 30 hours of public service. With more COVID regulations lifted in our region, the weekend will see businesses such as the brand new Sanuk Park open for business. Our example of Sanuk Park is offering free entry and details can be found on their Facebook, just look them up. It's a venue designed for both adults and children and they, along with similar venues, have spent the week readying for a weekend relaunch. 
Sanook is offering all kinds of water fun right the way through to scuba diving lessons, along with dining areas and rest areas adjusted for social distancing. And with the Met Office promising highs today of 33, dropping down to 29, an overcast day with rain at any time, and similar predictions for the weekend. Local and national news today from Fabulous 103 FM and Fabulous Patia Media Group. And to get a notification every time we release another bulletin or programme, like and subscribe to our channel, Fabulous Patia Media Group, by using the link below.